Oh, shit. Oops. Welcome to elementary. I hope you're having a fabulous Monday, wherever you are watching from. Today, I, um, I want to thank all of you for joining. My guests should ask me to join at any moment, although I haven't seen them join yet. So let's talk about the real estate market while we wait. What is going on in the real estate market in the greater Toronto area and Toronto? I, um, Yeah, so there's, there's quite a bit going on, or should I say, well, there's a lot, there's lots going on, but there's lots, you know, um, very stagnant. Um, there's still things moving, and believe it or not, um, we're not seeing, even though the market is not as hectic as we anticipated, we're not seeing that price drop that we anticipated. Uh, maybe a bit stagnated uh, for a while, but the price hasn't dropped yet, which is interesting. So my guest hasn't um, joined yet, and I'm hoping that they get on the show, but we'll just keep going and, and make it happen because the show must go on. So with regard to the real estate market as such, um, we haven't seen as much movement that we anticipated for this time of the year. Now, of course, I just realized we were into like 10 days into December. Um, I just realized that yesterday, really. <laughs> but um, which means by the time mid-December comes around, Typically, the market gets a little slower unless you were in 2017 where the market was crazy um, and people wanted to buy. Now, I will say that if you're in the luxury market and you want to buy in Toronto, then, you know, that luxury tax has come in and that luxury tax that is being introduced um, will start to kind of hit people's pocketbooks. So, there might be a lot of people that are just trying to get into the market so they don't have to pay extra if they were looking to purchase at that price point. Now, not everyone is looking to purchase at that price point, um, for sure, um, especially if you're um, looking to get a mortgage. So those rates haven't dropped per se. The Bank of Canada's announcement held the rates um held the rates for at 5%, uh, and that's the Bank of Canada rate. So um, it's, it's, it's unknown as to when we'll see rates drop. And I don't think we'll see the rates drop like nonstop. Um, like they just won't come back in and cut like one, two, three percent, bring it all down to to what we were. I think gone are the days of, of the 1% or half a percent or whatever we had. Um, I don't think those rates are coming back anytime soon. Will it land somewhere around the 3% mark? Probably three to mid threes at some point that might be where it stalls at. But there's so many factors. I mean, look, I'm just, I'm, I'm not any expert in, in that field. Even the experts don't really know where this will land. It'll land where it lands. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if my, my guest is having a hard time getting on, but um, like I said, show must go on. So I will keep giving you the announcements of the, um, the Toronto market um, unless you have questions for me, feel free to drop it in the comment section below. So, yeah, so, um, so like I said, if you are probably looking to uh, buy 
in the luxury market in Toronto, you're probably the one of the few that are out there looking. Um, and if you're looking to buy, so, you know, every pocket has something different going on. So when people tell you, hey, this is what's going on in Toronto, it's, it's really, um, not customized to what you're going to see. So if you're looking to sell your house, I would make sure you understand what is happening in your neighborhood specifically in your area and how you can make those numbers add up for you. Working with a good mortgage broker will help you uh, break down the numbers and help you understand your money and how far you can stretch it or not. However, you know, there are deals to be had. There are uh, areas in the city where you'll see homes on the market for a longer period of time, homes that probably, um, you know, you're probably going to get a reasonable deal on them. When I say deal, I don't mean it's going to be cut in half. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, like sales, the only thing that's cut in half are the stuff nobody wants, right? So, but... But for the homes and what's happening in the housing market, um, there is a disconnect between, you know, what people want, like what sellers are looking for on a price and what buyers are willing to pay. And really, you know what they say, your home is only worth what someone's willing to pay for it, right? If someone's not willing to pay that price for it, they're not going to pay it. And you may think it's worth, and we all think a house is worth a lot more, but in saying that, it's, I would say, you know, understand the market, understand where you are, understand how, how long it takes for a home to sell. It's not going to fly off the shelf in like a few days unless you're grossly underpriced. And even if you are, um, I'm seeing those ones sit on the market because people are understanding that they want a lot more. They understand the value and they understand people want a lot more and they're just trying to get traction and get people in the door. So, don't, um, you know, annoy people by doing silly things like that if you're looking to sell your home. Um, and um, with regard to what what's anticipated for uh, the first quarter of next year, you know, we always anticipate the best market possible, right? We always anticipate that people will start to um, come out, but you know, January is always typically a slower month. You know, everyone spends their money at Christmas and, um, and then it's a little quieter. And by the end of February, you start to see more properties on the market. So what do you see on the market right now is obviously if people are looking to buy and there's very limited supply, um, you know, obviously you'll be one of the few that get, um, some traction. But understand what market you're in before you, um, you know, bef before uh, you get your hopes up and before you get, uh, bef when you decide to list, understand the market you're in, understand how long it's going to take for your home to sell. Um, and if you're a condo, you know, the condo market is suffering because there's so much, especially in Toronto, because there's so much inventory on the market and there's so many new development. So I've been uh, watching some new areas um, come on the market. And um, so of course, you know, uh, people that have bought, obviously, they are looking to sell before they're looking to assign their property before um, they have to actually close on them. And so they bought at a very high rate, and they are looking to sell. And those are the people I'm noticing as they get closer, it's getting a little tricky with them because they are not seeing any movement. Um, I've seen actually a few people give back their property to the builder um, or walk away. Now, let's talk about that a bit because I think it's a it's a good topic, right? These people are losing their deposits by walking away from it. So some of them are in upwards of two, three hundred thousand. You know, there were a couple at three fifty. I've seen a couple at two hundred thousand. Um, that's a lot of money in, and, and you know, I know, um, for some of us, for me, especially just looking at prices, um, 
housing prices. And when we talk about housing prices, we're like throwing around these million dollar housing prices without any regret. And, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's great, but you have to understand value too, right? Um, and how much that will cost, uh, for you to, um, carry those costs. So, uh, for these, uh, people who've, who've signed up, some of these builders were actually not even asking you to qualify for a mortgage. Uh, typically, when you buy a brand new property, a builder will ask you 30 days in to provide the mortgage certificate. Um, that's why a lot of times people like to use the builders, um, the bank that the builder uses, because the bank will um, hold that rate till the end of the project. But because these projects are taking so long, um, the builder is really not... Um, not, not many of them are showing up with a bank or a few of them may be, but not a lot of them. I haven't been seeing that happen. And so what has happened is when they show up, um, when you, when it's time to close, that's when, you know, that's when you get like, and you know, people are getting a little antsy because, um, clearly they haven't thought that far. Right. And now that it's time to close, they have to come up with this, um, this amount of money that they should be making in order to get a mortgage. And so what do they do? Uh, this couple of things. Either they give back their property to the builder because they can't close and they think that it solves their problem. But does it really? It doesn't solve their problem because you're still on the hook because they have a contract with you. You're still on the hook when you walk away. So, and I can guarantee you, more than likely, some of them haven't even read their contract when they purchase these properties. Um, or they haven't even had someone identify to them what the costs associated are. I've had a few people who have assignments and have asked the question and they don't even have the answer for me. Um, in other words, like what's the developmental fees? Like, what is it? Is it capped? What are you paying? Like assignments, people are like, oh, I have free assignments. Well, nothing in life is free. You're probably paying for, um, a, a you know, an administration fee. You still have to put all of those those down because whoever's buying your property should be aware of all those things that you have to pay, right? And it's important that they know. It's not that they are not going to buy your property. It's just that they know what they have to spend. And if they can um, afford it, they'll buy it. So it comes down to, you know, the builders um, just walking away is not going to get you off the hook. Um, someone's going to have to buy that property at what what price and is the builder going to come after you for the for the uh, remainder because you failed to fulfill the the contract? The other part to it is that um, so now you have a property and you decide you want to close on it, and you know now you have to figure out how you're going to come up with this money. I think most people didn't understand that, um, like even if you sell the property the bank is not going to probably loan you more than what the person paid for it. So um, they're going to look at the value and they're going to uh, figure out what some other people are paying and they could, you know, so it's a very tricky, tricky situation to be in. Um, and you really need to know. So the bottom line is you really need to know your numbers. You really need to understand where you stand, even if, you know, something changes, you really need to get into um, figuring out how much that person owes on this property. Um, and um, how much a person owes on the property, and you know, what what you're buying into. So I mean, a good mortgage broker will help you with that, they will help you figure it all out. And that way, you know what you're getting into before you just jump with both feet without looking. So um, typically, that's really what I'm seeing with um, with some of these new properties. Um, actually, I even noticed um, one property, uh, $400,000 difference. So the same model, uh, one one property is actually, I mean, it's, it's a lot more. It's got like a walkout. It's got a larger lot size. 
but $400,000 difference. Like, I mean, it's going to be a little crazy once one property sells to justify the price when you're buying the second property, especially if someone's trying to, um, um, you know, get a mortgage for you on that piece. So that's my little rant on, um, on, you know, purchasing a new house and what's happening in Toronto. Today, I wanted to talk also, I'm uh, just mentioning about, you know, parents and having elderly parents and what that has in store for you. So I wanted to, you know, share this piece to say, hey, if you have elderly parents, do you have, like, I mean, drop the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you have elderly parents, do you have um, are you on their accounts when it comes to, you know, should something happen to them? Are you on their Rogers account? Are you on the insurance? Are you on um, as a person who could speak, not on the insurance as a, in a driver, but as a person who can speak on their behalf? Um, and the reason why I say this is because sometimes things happen and people pass away and it happened to us, actually, we had to learn the hard way, where um, insurance company did not want to even talk to any of the family members. They tried to give them, you know, information to close the account. And it was kind of a little ridiculous, like it was just such a runaround, right? So just um, a little bit of a public service announcement. Also, we're at that time of the year when it's getting colder and, you know, furnaces could be breaking down or your um, things may be happening. And and if you have older parents, sometimes, I, I um, you know, I, I don't know how to say this without really coming out and saying it, but they like to feel like they're independent. So um, they actually, if something happens, they decide they want to call people on their own. But a lot of times what then happens is they only call you and they run into a little bit of trouble, right? So we know there's a lot of, there are a lot of people out there who take advantage of the elderly, who think they can scam them. So just keeping those little things in mind about not letting people into your house, not letting, you don't need a thermostat from a third party. You can buy one. They're pretty cheap to buy. Um, you don't need someone to come in and give you, um, test your water or any of those things, you know, because before you know it, you'll have a badly renovated bathroom or who knows what with, I know they've put in some rules, um, very recently to stop that. But I think until people actually catch on to them, um, we'll still have difficulty with people who want to take advantage. Anyhow, seeing that you have no questions and my guest is a no-show, um, I figured I would end uh, today. You know, feel free at any point, if you have questions at any point, feel free to um, drop me a DM or ask, just reach out and ask if you have any questions and if there's any way um, I can help. You know, I'm always looking for people that I can um, interview. Um, and so if you or someone you know wants to be interviewed, reach out. I'm happy to, um, you know, um, take a look to see if you're, if, if what you do coincides with with the protocols for the interview and then we can put you on um, a list and of course hopefully I, I just um, want to say I'm a little disappointed when people want to get interviewed but then they don't show up for the interview because it's kind of annoying but anyways that's just me telling you how I really feel um, sometimes I know things happen life happens and like I said show must go on it's a good thing I like to talk but anyways um yeah, so, and if you have a topic you'd like me to unpack a bit further, feel free to get in touch. And I, I see Tony Rose is on. Thank you, thank you. Um, anyone looking for makeup services, get in touch. Um, she did a fabulous job um, with the wedding makeup, and I must give her a shout out today. 
But until next time, I will talk to you soon. Thank you again for watching and we'll chat soon. Bye.